Got some cannonballs down here, probably all welded together. Can't pick them up. Nope, of course not. And there you go. See a person like me smoke weed till I hallucinate. I don't know why. <laughs> Crazy, right? Yeah, it's a hell of a view. Hello y'all, welcome back. Uh, so I'm out near Kearney, Nebraska, and I am at Fort Kearney. Uh, and here's a map. We're gonna take one of these because, oops, dropped it. Because much to my dismay, the visitor center is closed for the season. So we're gonna take a wander around the park here and see what this is all about. I'm hoping that like some of this stuff is actually open since uh, the visitor center is closed for the season, but we'll see. But just for a little bit of history here, Fort Kearney State Historical Park was originally a safe haven for Overland Trail travelers, uh, Pony Express riders, and gold prospectors. Fort Kearney is now a state historical park preserved by the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. Uh, visitors, visitors to the park can explore reconstructed buildings, including a stockade, parade grounds, powder magazine, and blacksmith carpenter shop. Uh, you can explore the exhibits telling the history of the fort. So here we are at the blacksmith shop and it's actually got a sod roof on it. Can you guys see that? There's grass growing out of the roof. And that means these are probably all like mud and sod bricks that they would have used back in the day here. I couldn't tell you exactly, but it is locked. Well, that's a bummer. Huh. Google Maps said it was open. They lied. Is there windows? Maybe a different door open? Well, there's broken windows. Uh, can't see nothing in there, though. Bummer. Well, hopefully that's opened up. I guess I can read this sign to you guys, the historical marker that they have here. <laughs> All right, so Fort Kearney. Uh, the growth of overland immigration to Oregon after 1842 resulted in the establishment of military posts across the West to protect our travelers. The first post, Fort Kearney, was established in the spring of 1848 near the head of the Grand Island along the Platte River by Lieutenant Daniel P. Woodbury. It was first called Fort Childs, but in 1848, the post was renamed Fort Kearney in honor of General Stephen Watts Kearney. Despite its lack of fortifications, Fort Kearney served as a way station, sentinel post, supply depot, and, <laughs> and massage, and message center for 49ers bound for California and home seekers traveling to Oregon and the Pacific Northwest. By the 1860s, the fort had become a significant stage in fright and freighting station and home station of the Pony Express. During the Indian Wars of 1864 to 1865, a small stockade was apparently built upon the earth embankment still visible. Although never under attack, the post did serve as an outfitting depot for several Indian campaigns. Uh, one of the fort's final duties was the protection of workers building the Union Pacific. In 1871, two years after the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad, the, force, the fort was discontinued as a military post, and this site has been entered into the National Register of Historic Places. So, there's some signage and stuff over there. We might wander that way, and then uh, it might be kind of hard to see, but they've got like wood sticking up out of the ground. And I believe that is to show you where some of the old buildings were at. But let's see if we can get in there. All right. Luckily, this is open. Uh, so not much in here. We'll check out one of these towers in the corner. But this was known as Fort Mitchell or the East Fort here. 
Let's go ahead and check out one of these corner turrets, I guess you could call it. So it gives you a view all around since they stick out and if someone were attacking the wall you would be out farther than farther than them and be able to get them. There's one on each corner. We'll go check out what some of the signage says. trail and its principal cutoffs followed by thousands of Western emigrants and so here we are at Fort Kearney I live over in this area and I followed interstate 80 over here and if, we, if you uh, go back in some of my videos I camped at uh, another spot that was on the Oregon Trail I can link that down below I can't remember the name of the video off the top of my head but yeah Goes all the way out to Oregon. Some old flags. There's an old picture of it. Uh, 1870. It's hard to see, guys. I know. It's really faded. Okay, so this, there's a little sign here. Uh, and this says the earthworks upon which the stockade replica stands are of the dimensions described in the records of Colonel Robert R. Livingston, the commander of the Eastern Subdistrict of Nebraska Headquarters, Fort Kearney. They were part of the fortifications constructed in the late fall of 1864. Uh, Fort Kearney had not had fortifications prior to that time, but as Indian depredations increased and the Great Overland Route was closed, the volunteer troops who replaced the regular army in 1861 began the task of fortifying and reopening the road west. These earthworks served as temporary fortifications until timber could be cut to erect a stockade. So I, get to, I guess this is also known as a stockade. Uh, we've got some, some stuff about the Indian Wars. And on the other side, Some more, it looks like, uh, crests here. Oh, displayed here are some of the coat of arms of some of the military units that served at Fort Kearney. The use of these insignia has been approved by the Public Information Division. Uh, Office of the Chief of Information, Department of the Army, United States of America. Reproductions from photos provided by the United States Army. Uh, dates shown are years the units had officers and men on the roster at Fort Kearney. Coats of arms or badges were first authorized to be placed on colors of organizations on September 1919 by the War Department. Uh, circular number 444 is amplified by War Department Circular number 527, 25 November 1919. I don't know what any of that last stuff means, but I'm sure some of you guys out there do. And you've got a few more here. Yeah, some of these are kind of cool. <laughs> got a nut. Wild boar, 30th Infantry. And that's kind of it for in here. We'll take a wander over to the other side over there where there are some, it looks like there's some statues and maybe a cannon. And then I'll tell you a little bit about some of the, what are these other areas were. But uh, it's cool to, cool to see this here, to think of all the people that passed through here. Uh, this would be a cool place to like go metal detecting, although I'm sure at this point somebody's probably already done that. And as far as I know, you can't metal detect on any state property unless you have like written permission or something but yeah let's go check out some of this stuff so we've made it a little ways over here and you really can't read this sign very well uh, but that's what it would have been if you guys can see that 
Uh, you can see in the ground here, it's probably hard for you guys to see, but there's, uh, looks like footings for a building here. Oh, they go all the way over here. You can see where the edge of it was. There's some there and there. What's that? Oh, water. Let's see if I can figure it out on this map. Uh, so there would have been, this is what we're looking at here. Can you guys see it? This is what we're looking at here. This would have been an Adobe storehouse. And then at one point there would have been soldiers quarters uh, right there where you can see those pieces of wood sticking up and then straight up there. Um, kind of same for over here where all this wood is sticking up out of the ground. Those were also soldiers quarters, officers quarters, and there was a kitchen over here. Yeah, you can see how they're squared up to designate where the buildings were placed at at one point. Let's see if any of these signs are legible. Yeah. So right in front of us was the men's quarters. Can't really read any of this. Yeah, these are all really, really worn out. Let's go check this out. They've got an old school flagstaff, and then they've got a 24 pound mounted howitzer. I believe that's what it says. That's neat, guys. I've never seen a flagpole like that that's made out of two poles, like tied together, or big. there's big metal straps on there. And I guess somebody could have gone up and sat on that deck and acted as a lookout. Maybe, maybe this piece just fell out of there. I think that's what happened. Uh, so they don't have a flag up right now, but they talk about how the how there was only 29 states in the Union when this was established. Ah, oh, that's cool. The flagpole was placed almost right on the 99th meridian. 100th meridian is the start of the great American desert. Uh, it's located in Kozad, wow. The original flagpole was 90 feet tall. Two tall trees banded together. Steps or rungs led to the crow's nest that supposedly the bugler climbed each morning. So yeah, I guess the bugle guy would go up there and wake everybody up. And there's a very, very old photo of it. And you can see it's strapped together right there, maybe. And you got some old homies down here hanging out. Buildings were cool. All right. Let's check out this gun. Ooh, they got a selfie station. We'll have to take a selfie here. Look at that. Solid. That's stamped with 1847. They've probably got it all locked up. Uh, they've got the fuse hole covered here. But you can see down here, there would have been a crank somewhere on it. Oh, there it is. So you could crank that to move the gun up and down to change your trajectory. And then, wow, it was, it was mounted on this. So you could use that handle to move the gun up and down. And then right here, it had rollers and you could roll it side to side. I wonder if it's, I wonder if I can move it at all. No, no. You got some cannonballs down here, probably all welded together. Can't pick them up. Nope, of course not. And there you go. Into the oblivion. What does it say right here? 8162? 162? Maybe gun 162? I don't know. Cannon 162? Oh, there's a sign on it. Okay, you guys won't be able to read that at all. So I can barely read it. It says, Iron Garrison Howitzer, model 
M1844, serial number 162, Inspector JRW, date inspected June 15th, 1847. Manufactured, manufactured by Cyrus and Auger and Company, Boston, Massachusetts. Date manufactured 1847. Weight 1,490 pounds, 1,490 PDR. I don't know what PDR is. Oh yeah, and there you've got Cyrus and Auger Company, Boston. That's awesome. That is really cool. I wonder if like this is all the original wood. God, it's so solid. Oh, and there's another, another one here. What does this say? God, they're so hard to read. Carriage flank casemate model 1844 serial number 1987 manufactured Hunt and Schultz Company Fort Kearney. Cool stuff, y'all. That's violence right there. We've got a selfie station. Let's take ourselves a selfie with the cannon. Probably have to break my phone out for this. Uh, Took a second to get that done. All right, we got ourselves a selfie. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Uh, but here we are over at these uh, kind of monuments. Sun's on the wrong side. Probably hard for you guys to read, but it says, in honor of the soldiers and pioneers of Fort Kearney, established 1848, discontinued 1871. Erected by David A. Roan, post 759, Veterans of Foreign Wars, 1932. Herman Matson, Jr. Commander. I don't know if there's anything on the other side. Probably not. Nope. And you got one more here. Dedicated to the memories of our fathers by the Department of Nebraska Daughters of Union Veterans of the Civil War, 1861-1865. And then you've got some more wood sticking up over here where there would have been buildings at uh let's see this was the quartermaster warehouse right here and then the building over there would have been the commissary warehouse uh just so you know right here would have been the guard house and the prison and then right next to it would have been uh the warehouse and some barracks and over here, you've got the powder magazine. So there's a door on this. It might be locked up, but it's a big uh, earth mound. And yeah, here you can see on a picture, earth and sod cover. And then they would have put like all the uh, black powder and stuff like that in there. Uh, so if it were to detonate or something like that, it wouldn't kill everybody. But it looks like it's locked. Dang it. Whack! Uh, well, it came at the wrong time of year for this one, that's for sure. Missed the two buildings. Would have been nice to see what was in there. It's probably just an empty room, but... Yeah, bummed we can't get inside of it. Well, at some point in the future, I'm probably going to come back here. Whether or not I make a video of it, but... Oh, there's wood inside of it. There you go. So, there's the door. You would walk down a few steps. And then it's wooden inside of there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it would be cool to see it in there, but for whatever reason, it's not open. Uh, and when I, I mean, there's people here in the visitor center. Everything's just closed. Should have knocked on the door and asked for the key. Like, Let me get in there. All right, y'all. Uh, I think I'm just going to head back to the truck. That's really it here, since I can't visit any more of this stuff. We'll just... Uh, I'll get headed on down the road to camp.
Well, y'all, we've made it to a spot. Uh, and I guess I'll tell you where I'm at because of where I just visited. So this is Fort Kearney State Park, which is probably like two miles away from the actual Fort Kearney, which is over that direction. Uh, and this is actually a really nice park. I've never been here before. Uh, but all like almost all the sites have electricity, which is surprising. And uh, there's actually a couple other people out here right now, but it's a big enough park that I managed to find a spot by myself. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna get the truck set up and get myself a fire going and hang out for a little while. Well, fire's going. I'll grab something to drink. All right, I may be sitting in the wrong spot for the smoke, but uh, it's slowly getting going here. We could use a little bit of a breeze. It's pretty calm right now, which is nice though, because the weather is beautiful. Uh, so I picked up a Corona hard seltzer. I can't say I've ever had one of these before. I don't, I don't believe so. I've had a few seltzers. I didn't know Corona made a seltzer, but authentic margarita flavor, it's just classic lime. Hard seltzer with the natural flavors and a splash of real juice. Don't think I've ever had this. Uh, sometimes it's getting to the point where I can't remember what beers I've all tried. I guess this isn't really classified as a beer, but yeah. There's a pond right behind me here. I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys that in a second. It's about half open, so I think it's probably about time that I put the fishing poles back in the truck, long rods, and. Uh, Start bringing those with me everywhere again because there's also a pond on the other side of this road here and that one is completely open. These are really small ponds, but they probably, probably got some fish in them. A little better. So maybe you can see there's a pond right there on the other side of the road. And that one's completely open. I almost camped in that spot, but kind of liked the bushes and stuff behind me there. But if I had a rod, I'd toss it out, at least try. Water's still really clear. Oop, something just ran off. Oop, something else just ran off. I saw three or four little bluegills just took off from the bank. I don't know if you guys can see those. Little bridge over there. Like I said, there's another pond on that side. There's one here. I may be wrong. I think there's like six ponds here. Six or seven, something like that. Bunch of campsites. Most of them are on the water. Or at least back up to the water. Uh, and... We're not terribly far off of the interstate, uh, so I thought it was gonna be noisy, but it's really quiet. 
I think we're maybe like three or four miles off of the interstate, something like that. And here we've got the other pond. There's a nice fishing pier over on the other side. Yeah. Should have brought a fishing pole. Well, I wonder where that's coming from. It's cold. Well, maybe we'll have to bust the pole out for the next video. I don't know. Don't have anything planned for that one because the weather is changing so much here and there. Huh. Yeah, just overall, really nice camping site. Really nice uh, park. And you're kind of out in the middle of Nebraska, so they're going to be relatively quiet. I was surprised that. Uh, there was a truck camper in here, although he just left. And then if you go down a little farther, there was one, or there was a pop-up camper, and there was another uh, just camper trailer. There wasn't anybody at either of them, so who knows? Maybe they're just living here for the winter. Eh. Just going to enjoy the sunset and sip my beer. We'll get dinner going here shortly. All right, tonight, y'all, we're going to keep it pretty simple. Uh, I went and picked up a couple of brats. These are bacon and cheddar brats. And oops, I'm going to drop them. The reason that I wanted to grab these and just have brats tonight was I wanted to try this uh, ghost pepper ketchup again. I've had this in a video, uh, and I ate it on um, hash browns. And it was great, but I said in the video that I wanted to try it on some meats. So we'll throw it on these... Uh, brats here and other than that I've just got some coleslaw guess I do have a can of beans I could make but I think two brats and some coleslaw will be enough I just really want to try this on some meats here um, it's a pretty crusty looking grill grate but we'll send it anyways we just got to keep it away from over there because there's some bird poop on it There's been a surprising amount of traffic out here, uh, but there's a bunch of trails and really this is like one of the only parks, state parks, I think, in this general area uh, for a few miles in each direction anyways. So maybe we'll have to, we should have walked one of the trails this evening, but maybe we'll hit one in the morning for sunrise. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know why I grabbed my pots and pans. My pot and a plate, I guess. I don't know. Those are about done. I'm losing my light.
a little bit of toast on that bun. Got a gooey gooey weenie. This one back. All right. Well, nothing crazy, but I really just wanted to try this ketchup again, y'all. Try it on some meats. suppose we could do this we could throw some coleslaw on the top of the next one maybe see how that tastes but yeah that's good I would highly recommend this ketchup y'all or if you can find any other kind of spicy ketchup uh, in your area give it a shot but this is from Woodside Kitchen I don't know if it's bright enough for you guys to see that was sent in a while ago to the P.O. Box, but it is very good. Ooh, and I just took a face full of smoke. Kind of sitting in the wrong spot, but the sunrise or the sunset's over there. So I was sitting here watching the sunset. I expected it to be over there, kind of thrown off. Well, I tried the coleslaw with a bite of the sausage on the first one. I'd have to say that's a no-go to mix those together. It's not the right kind of coleslaw, I don't think. But the weenie with this ketchup is amazing. There's so many birds out here. There was a woodpecker in the tree up here. I managed to catch it on my cell phone uh, and I posted it to my Instagram story. So if you guys aren't following me on Instagram, make sure you check it out. I'll put my Instagram on the screen here. It's crazy underscore Quady. Uh, but I post a lot of random crap like that on my Insta stories. Well, got everything cleaned up out there. Fire's about dead. And uh, I'm gonna get a movie going. So I finally found something that I've been looking for for quite a while that was not available anywhere else. And uh, I randomly found it on the internet today and downloaded it. So hopefully I didn't download a virus or something, but Let's grab a tablet and we'll get right into it. I'll have to look the details up on my phone because, like I said, I just found it randomly on Internet Archive. And I can leave the video, or I can leave a, a link in the description down below if you guys want to check it out. If you've never seen it anyways. All right, so this is, uh, it's probably not the easiest movie to watch for some of y'all, and it was, gosh, when did it even come out? So the movie we're going to watch tonight is called Kids. It's from 1995, uh, so I would have been 11 when it came out, and I, 
I'm gonna say I probably saw it when I was like 12 or 13, way too, way too young to see the movie. Uh, but it's rated NC-17, so like I said, it might not be for all of y'all. It's a drama, indie film movie, uh, and it's a moral teen. I'll give you the description here. It says, a moral teen Telly has made it his goal to sleep with as many virgin girls as possible, but he doesn't tell them he's HIV positive. While on the hunt for his latest conquest, Telly and his best friend Casper smoke pot and steal from shops around New York. Uh, meanwhile, Jenny, one of Telly's early victims, makes it her mission to save other girls from him. But before she has a chance to confront him at a party, everything goes horribly wrong. Uh, it's not like it's a it's a rough movie to watch, but uh, it's pretty shocking. But yeah, it's a movie that I watched when I was very young, and I have not watched it. God, I think I've maybe seen it once or twice in my entire life. Uh, it's not available, like you can't rent it anywhere. You might be able to buy it somewhere. Uh, like buy a, I don't know if it's even like, if there's ever DVD copies were ever available. So you might only be able to find it on VHS, but you can download it on Internet Archive. And I'll leave a link to it down below if you wanna check it out. But it's a classic from my youth and uh, yeah. Some of my friends were pretty rowdy, let's just say that, back in the day. Should grab my stocking cap. Lows tonight are only in the, in the 20s, so it's not going to be bad. I'll have to turn that heater down. Ooh, before we get too far into this, one of you guys sent in this little Bluetooth speaker, so we're gonna give it a shot on here. Ooh, pause. So, this might give me some better sound. I have not fully charged this, so I might need to plug it in. But, we've got a Oontz Angle Solo speaker. Thank you for the speaker. Let's see if we can hook this. Hook this up. Super quiet or what? I'll we'll have to see when they start talking. Gosh. I have no legs. I have no legs. I don't know what I want to do. Oh, that's loud enough. Yeah. No. See a person like me smoke weed till I hallucinate. I don't know why. <laughs> Crazy, right? This party was dope. That shit got played quick. Jesus Christ, what I cannot believe I watched that movie when I was so young. I can't, I cannot believe it. Uh, we were pretty wild back then too. Uh, it's, it's wild to rewatch it now, this many years later. There were so many parts of that movie that I didn't remember. Such a wild flick. I'm gonna get crashed out because I've got my alarm set early and we're gonna try to go on a hike and uh, catch ourselves a sunrise. So we'll see how this turns out. The speaker's good.
whopping 24 degrees outside. It's gonna be a little bit of a brisk walk, but we'll survive. in the spot that I thought it would rise just like last night's sunset didn't go it didn't go down where I thought it would miles of abandoned railroad right away given to the R.E. Caldwell family, family April 11th 1977 I wonder if this whole thing is paved yeah I definitely missed the sunrise but uh, oh that's bright maybe I should have brought sunglasses with me do I have them on my head? I do <laughs> uh, so there's a bridge down here, and that's the reason I wanted to walk the trail. Uh, but that sun is definitely not coming up in the spot that I thought it would. people on the trail. It goes way down there, just straight. Oop. People walking towards me. All right, we're almost to the bridge here. It's been a bit of a walk, uh, but this is, this is really nice. Once you get this far out, and you don't have all these trees between you and the campground, you can start to hear the interstate. They've got some signage up here. Uh, I'm in the Sandhill Crane. I believe that's what it's called, Sandhill Crane area. Uh, every year there's a huge migration through here. Maybe we'll have to come back for that. Uh, but I'm sure that's what some of this signage is about. And it shows the Platte River where it runs through. birds and uh, a little bit about the railroad if you guys want to pause and read that you can oh wow so one of these bridges was destroyed in a fire the north bridge I don't know yeah this is cool this is real cool Oh, 
looks like a fishy spot. Uh, kind of a bummer that it's got this stuff on the sides here. You can't really see. And you can't even see the sun, so. Oh, oh, there it is. Yeah. This is really long. Oh, can I get down on the island? I think I can. But, yeah. Here we are. Beautiful Platte River. And a bunch of snow geese. Yeah, there's stairs over here. I can't believe they put stairs on this thing. Let's not fall down these things. They're slick. All right. All right. Man, look at the size of those timbers. this was the bridge that this can't be the bridge that was rebuilt that looks really old I'm surprised it's not covered in more graffiti honestly I could have just came down here and strung up a hammock all of these posts have Roman numerals in them look at that They don't all match, but it's on all of them. You can see it there too. I went on the side where the flow would be coming from, because it's flowing this way. They've got these uh, steel things, so the bridge doesn't get damaged. Yeah, it's a hell of a view. Well, it was definitely worth getting up uh, early for this. Would have been cool to be out here right as the sun came up, but I'm kind of an idiot. And here we've got the river again. Yeah, super shallow. Like, you can see the bottom everywhere. And this trail keeps going. I don't know how far down it goes. It might go all the way into Kearney, but this is as far as I'm gonna make it today. Uh, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and close this one out here. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Kind of a bummer that the fort was half closed yesterday, but still cool nonetheless, and this kind of all makes up for it, honestly. Uh, and then dinner was uh, nothing exciting, but last night's movie, man. Uh, like I said, it's not the easiest movie to watch, especially as you get older. I feel like it's even, like I look back at that and I'm like, wow. But uh, yeah, it's kind of a rough movie, uh, but a great one. And uh, reminds me a lot of my uh, teenage years. Oh, I just missed something floating. Looks like it might have been a dead rat or something. Uh, Coffee is good too, guys. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next adventure. I'll see you in a bit. Yeah.